welcome to the Zooming Who's podcast, and I'm your host, Dustin Husky. And I'm Kurt Ansarpus. And we are back again. Yes, that was take two. Too. That was take mild, two. Mild stroke there the first time, so uh, came in again. He isn't blind anymore. <laughs> Oop. I don't know what that was, but that, that bazeared out of, <laughs> out of a location. So, yes. We all know, judging by the date of this podcast, you all know that during this time of 2020, we are in, of course, the political season. I won't discuss too much into it because I will not discuss in it's detail. A, it's a shitstorm. Oh, it's a total shitstorm. And you know what? I, I don't. Your favorite word? This is definitely a dumpster fire of, of an election. Of a year as well, but also of the election. Of a year and of an election. And I'm just going to say this. I am. I have never been so disinterested, yet interested in politics before. You can still say, in some cases, politics is still important to at least understand what's going on. Yeah. However, I also genuinely don't care as much as I used to, because it's just gotten so polarized. Of course, I don't talk among friends because you know what? I don't believe I should talk about it with friends. Well, like, even before 2016, we all, my friends at the state and whatnot, we used to discuss, you know, politics after work at, at the bar and whatnot, have, have a beer from right. all ends of the political spectrum. Right. Even to the more radical points, which today would be kind of spooky. I knew co-workers on all levels of the political spectrum, and we all, under a beer or two at a bar, discuss things in relative harmony, yeah. if you believe it. I get that. If you can actually believe six, seven, eight people of different political backgrounds could have a normal, non-angry or aggressive conversation about who was right and who was wrong... That's how it should be. And we all understood we we're all wrong and we're all right. Let's just stick with that. And you know what? At the end of the day, it's like, this is a lot of fun. We got to do this more often. And you know what? After 2016, no one doesn't know how to talk politics anymore. I, I refuse to talk politics with any of my friends, even with friends who I know we may share similar beliefs. Yeah. I feel like it's just better off, hey, look, life's too short. Let's talk about... Um, parks of statues with shattered penises and broken noses, which I will get to that in, in, in another subject in a moment. Please do. Um, but I don't know about you, but I'm so disinterested about politics on a public level as far as you talking on other people. I'm so disinterested talking about it with other people out in the outside world. It's like, yeah, I'm I'm gonna nod if you're if you're gonna talk to me about something about Biden this or Trump that, I'm going to nod and I'm going to agree. But you don't know exactly what I'm exactly nodding to because yeah. I frankly don't care. I, I just want to get through the moment of, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, oh, I totally agree, uh-huh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, stupid snails. And then there we go. <laughs> I will say <laughs> that I feel the same way, but here's why. When people do discuss politics... They are trying to get a rise out of people. That, but more importantly, if they know that you don't feel the same, they're trying to influence you and change your mind. Honestly, people are stubborn. It's part of human nature. If you told a caveman that one side of the mountain was easier to climb than the other, you know what? That caveman would do what he wants to do anyway. Yeah. You're not going to change anyone's mind. It's like the undecided voters. I highly doubt there's that many out there. Because if you really don't know what you actually want, you probably shouldn't get involved in voting anyway if you really don't know. And there's some people out there like that. I just think you believe in something, great. Stick with it. Whether if we may agree or disagree, I can respect that choice. Right. But... 
trying to convince, like, uh, like my mom's friend, uh, who's been trying to convince her to sway to her beliefs for the past 25 years, well, they got into a not-so-fun discussion. My mom came home, wrote her an email, discussing why talking about politics overall has just not been good for their friendship. And she she came to me about it and asked me, what did I think? And I thought, I don't know. I think people just don't care this, what they this say. This was recently? Yeah, this is in the last week. Oh, wow. And you know what? I kind of told my mom flat out, I don't know if she's going to care at all what you say. Because people with political beliefs are going to always believe what they believe. And mm. if people don't believe like they do, they're going to cast you away. That's kind of how it is. Her mind, and she can't change her mom's mind. You know what happened? She got an e she got an email back. Her friend wants to actually apologize and says it was wrong of her trying to convert her for so many years, but also in recently knowing what's going on. She became the bigger person and says, "Look, I'm sorry. I know it's affecting our friendship, and I want to rather keep a friendship than lose one." Mm -hmm. So I am willing to no longer discuss politics with you, and let's move forward and continue to be good friends. And it may have been the best outcome through an email I've ever... I would never even expect that. I was not expecting that. That's why I was thinking to my mom, which, she's an innocent person. Um, she's She's still French in mind where you can still, like, in the old ways where a duel is a measure of someone's honor... Right. Not often enough, you gain more respect and your life if you just simply decline and say, Hey, look, I'm going to decline. You're in the right. Let me buy you a gin or a beer or whatever. I wish that it happened with me and Ken. Oh, really? Yeah, because I, could not, I couldn't talk to him anymore. It, it just became... Even non-political discussions... Even non-political discussions... Yeah. Somehow turned into political political discussion, something that had nothing to do with politics at all, or very little to do with with politics. He would turn it into a political um, thing, and it just became to the point where I couldn't talk to him anymore, and I had to I had to sever the friendship. I've never in my life done that, not purposefully. I mean, like normally. I don't care with what you believe, so as long as you don't try to flaunt it in my face, if you want to have some form of a skirmish discussion about something, sure, I might maybe bite, but I'm still going to be very, very careful with what I say, because I don't want to piss people off either, but I tend to just not engage at all. Um, but there has been some, some times where that has happened, and you know what? It's kind of... It's kind of sad. It's good to have friends with differing opinions. I totally believe that. It's just sometimes they take it too seriously, and sometimes you take it too seriously, and then that really destroys a friendship that would have been, well... Again, people don't know how to talk about politics anymore, and people that do follow politics are, are either in the camp of they're going to be very vocal about it, which is very gutsy in this time and age, and those that may know what's going on, but they don't want to speak out loud about it. It's just... Yeah. For me, I'm a furry. I'm a, I'm a fluffy husk that just would rather swirl on people and kind of zoomy. Um, and I would rather loaf and on everything. And I'm kind of the old type of furry in this fandom that kind of says keep politics out of fandom, which has never always been the case. In the, I mean, it's it's always been around, let's be honest. But it was never this bad. Even back in 2012, it was not that bad. I don't know. I feel like as I've gotten older, I've paid more attention to it. To politics or the... Politics. Uh. Because I remember as a kid, my grandmother saying that Ronald Reagan was the devil... He was a well-spoken devil. 
And he was our first president that actually had dementia. Because really, his his wife, Nancy, was the one that ran this country in the second term. Yeah. His first term, he was still somewhat there. Yeah. But by the time he got elected again, Ronald wasn't really actually running the country at that point. He no. was... He knew he knew sort of where he was, but he was no longer always there. That's why you always saw Nancy around him in the second term. Yeah. Unless it's for photo ops, she's usually always there by his table. So she effectively ran the country. She was our very first um, wo woman president without even realizing it. Yeah. Um, and people are talking about, you know, dementia this and dementia that. Dementia's not fun. No. I don't understand why people... Oh, yeah, well, he's got dementia. Like, like my boss talks about, you know, Oh, Biden's got the dementia. But, yeah, his mom has dementia. Hmm. And he talks about how how awful it's it's been with, with his mom. Yeah. But when it comes to, like, a political opponent, he's like, Oh, yeah, yeah, screw him. He's like... Do you understand what you're saying? <clears throat> no, that's right. He doesn't. Because he switches off his brain, which... I didn't know that is... by your boss. Oh, yeah, his mom is uh, fully... Fully has dementia. She was recently walking around without any pants in the neighborhood. Wow. And was admitted to a hospital. Mm. Uh, so if it's that bad to wear that she's running around without any underwear, not just pants, no underwear, she was bottomless. Um, you know it's sad and dementia's never ever a good thing no but when you make fun of people with dementia you really are an awful person you he really is. shouldn't he is an awful person anyway my boss yeah oh my boss is an evil human being he he cackles when he laughs yeah. he is he makes a perfect bond villain <laughs> um but yeah, but I just thought I just just wanted to shortly dis discuss. Politics is huge these days, and you know what? Ever since 2016, I fully cut politics out of my life. Because before then, I was very vocal. After that, I was like, holy fuck, this has become a total shit show. I'm disappointed with things and stuff. Mm -hmm. I kept following, but I never really got involved much again. I, I just said it was not worth my time. Yep. Now even so much so, yeah, it's important to vote. It's with my with my uh, absentee voting video earlier in the month or a month or two ago. It's important to vote. Everyone should vote. Every vote should count regardless of who you vote for. It always matters. Yep. And even if you're uh, politically indecisive, which... I don't know how, but I guess it's still possible. I still don't think you should maybe vote because you don't know who you're exactly voting for. But you should still at least vote. Because that's part of your right to live in this country is you get the power to vote, which in most countries you do. And then some countries, they give you a vote with only one name on it. And then you vote for that name every time. Like in China and Russia and North Korea. But I don't know. It's just to me, I don't know how you felt about that, but I'm totally disinterested with politics these days. I mean, you and I can discuss it, yeah. but amongst other people, the outside world and whatnot, I totally have a very, what, like a platonic view of? Not platonic. Uh, I just totally become blasé. Or a French term of just saying... Absolutely doesn't give a shit. Yep. Um, I really don't either. I don't. I still give a shit. I also don't give a shit if that's possible. So, going from that subject, I have another subject that I had mentioned earlier. Marble statues. Yes. The ancients were horny fucks. Because they're stealing the penises off of statues. Now or back then? Oh, back then. Because you know what? Bad Dragon didn't exist back then. So you had to find a way to chisel off a penis off a statue. Does that mean that people were put shoving concrete dildos up their asses? Yes. And you know what? 
When all the perfect dicks are gone off of statues, guess what? Guess where they went next? I have no idea. The nose. I don't know why. So for some reason, all the noses of all the statues are all gone. Yeah, I remember the noses were gone, but I thought it just broke off over time. You know what? The Sphinx? Someone was horny enough to want to fuck it. And it's, get fucked by the Sphinx nose. The Sphinx's nose hole? No, 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 the entire nose. What? Into the rectum. So they stole the whole nose of the Sphinx because, you know what? They wanted a pool of jizz, and they wanted to wallow around in it. So, all of these beautiful, beautiful statues all over Italy, all over Greece. The perfect dicks are hanging everywhere, and then one day, one guy or girl, probably guys, because you know what? This, it was guys. I, I, I would have to say, because you know what? Those statues are beautiful, and you know what? These guys are just handsome. With... Perfect schlongs and a set of nads. Yep, and a set of nads. And all they had to do was just take another rock, bash it at the shattered penis, yep. just just to just to simply break off the penis directly off the body. But if they just shattered just the head, well, now it's just a point, not just a more blunt, pointy dick. Because they're still horny enough to get the rest of the dick, but now they have two pieces of the dick, which uh, doesn't work so good. Nope. But uh, have you noticed that all the statues, all of them, except for a few that are preserved, because they knew that all these people are going after penises, that they started guarding these other remaining statues to make sure they're phallics, their phalluses, are being preserved so that they don't get chipped off and used into um, Gluteus Maximus's butt. What if they show up in a porno? Like, here's this concrete dildo. And it probably is vibrating, too. And you uh, know what? Hey. Vibrating and cracking. You know what? Comes out of the ass in pieces. 2,000 years, still hard. That's better than Viagra. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Because you always have to wonder, where do they all go? Yeah. Where did they go? Where did this? Where did the genitalia of the statue go? And all the women's statues are like, "Oh, come on! At least, at least grope me." They all get ignored. Yeah. They all get ignored, except for their legs and arms. Suddenly, all the men are stealing the legs and arms of these female statues. Well, right, because there's no hole in the vagina. Unless it's... they drill hard enough, and uh. they have a steel-tipped penis. But yes. In a forest somewhere, there is a pile of stolen penises from one man who's absolutely wanting to get laid. And the only way he could, without asking his best friend, is to steal a dick off a statue. And then he keeps it in a chest like modern day furries with bad dragons. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I know how Bad Dragon makes her dildos. They found a silicon statue and they chipped the penis off the statue. Probably. There we go. Case solved. But so, dragon dicks didn't exist, did they? Did dragon dicks exist back then? I mean, anything exists at this point. I would certainly say this. You know, finding a ton of silicon werewolf statues out in my woods... Oh, that would be amazing. You know what? I would not. I, I would be in my woods all all day. Yeah, I, I would not be leaving my woods at all. No. Nope. Where is he? Oh, he's over in the woods. I don't know what he's doing. Yep. Just have fourteen werewolf statues in your backyard of silicone, and one of them just kind of like falls over on you, kind of pins you down a bit. It's like, oh, this is so hot, but I can't get up. But his penis is on me. I can imagine a comic book based off of this, except the statue comes to life and then really rapes you. There we go. He gives you a good thrashing, but then afterwards he like gives you manly, manly werewolf cuddles. Ah. Uh -huh. You know that's what would happen. Of course. However, you go into another forest, 
It's a werehusk. Mm -hmm. And he's like the equivalent of 14 werewolves at that point because he's just too horny. I'm down. I'm down for that. It's just, just like, wait a minute. There's only one statue here. Holy Christ, he's horny. Oh, he's... He is... He is dripping like a crick. Or a creek. Depends on your uh, perspective in the world on how you pronounce this body of water. Speaking of dripping, um, pre-com. I'm, I'm a fountain. I'm, I'm a total, I, I'm a werehoose monster. I'm even that, more of a fountain. Yes, you are. <laughs> I am. I, I will douse sheets. I have seen this. I have certainly seen this. Oh. Yeah. Leaking is fun. It is. When I remember you're... I messaged somebody one time. They told me I should see a doctor because they, they thought something was wrong with me. Like, it doesn't go on all day long. It doesn't ever not stop. I, I'm just horny all, all the time, so oh. I just, like, look down and say, Oh, there's a... There's a spot on my underwear right there. I wore cotton briefs, well, cotton underwear to work the other day. Um, usually I wear Under Armour, which wicks the sweat or wicks the moisture away. Mm -hmm. The cotton just let it right through. So I had this big... Like spot, almost dime-sized spot on my jeans. I was like, "Well, that's great." Yeah, that's fucking. That's cotton underwear for you. That's that's me on a Tuesday, and today's a Tuesday. I don't have a spot on me right now, but I'm still working on it. Like, but last last week or two weeks ago, I was dripping so hard. That I, again, probably had like a penny or a dime size, because there's a difference, uh -huh. a slight difference. Penny is slightly bigger, but I think it was certainly a dime, though. And it was going right through my jeans. Oh. But since I wear a back brace for work or whatever it's called, a back belt or... I guess whatever they're called, and they're very comfy. Um, it kind of hid it away, but I knew for sure it was there. Oh. Mine was beating at first. It was beating through your jeans. Okay, I have yet it to do that. It was a bead, and then it, kind of, the bead like broke, and it just put it made a spot. That's that's a special power right there. Yep, I was beating. Beating at the Walmart. I don't know, I like... I like my special power of just leaking so much where it's just easy entry. That's always the best type of fun is just easy entry in. Mm -hmm. Speaking of superpowers, if you had a superpower that would only affect someone else in the worst way possible and it can be as evil as you like it to be, and it could happen to anyone, but for a short amount of time, so it cannot be permanent. But it can be as nasty and as evil as you want it to be. I want the power to give anyone severe Tourette's for 10 seconds. And it will be loud. And it will be disgusting. And I will do it to my boss only when he is with upper management. Oh, please do. <laughs> and I want 10 solid seconds of absolute filth coming Why out of his mouth. Why only 10 seconds? Why not make it 10 minutes? <laughs> See, you know, like, that's actually... Okay, that's it. we got to end this meeting. At you that need point, to get yourself checked out, man. Actually, no. The thing is that with like 10 minutes, people would probably run away. And he'd probably hide. The perfect with 10 seconds is that it's so sudden... No one has a chance to get out the door before they realize what's going on. So that's why 10 seconds of absolute terrible Tourette's. How often can you do this? 
at will, but I will do it only infrequently. Okay. That way he thinks it's done. Yes. Until it kicks in again. Yes. Okay. And you know what? I'll probably do an, an, an unlimited range for my um, power. I would endorse that. That way except he can do the, at home with his wife. Except... At, at the dinner table. Except the furthest away he is from you, the less likely you can actually use it more frequently. However, so it's based on a range. I'm, I'm going to give myself a limitation. It's going to be based on range. And you know what? I will still probably do it in the middle of the night. That's the only time I'd probably do it. Just when I know when he's going to bed. Yeah. And his dogs sleep on him. So he'll scare the shit out of his dogs, which I feel bad, but you know what? His dogs bite people. And bite people often. Yeah. So much so that he's currently getting sued by a USPS worker because his dog literally drew blood and ripped her leg open. We talked about that yes. before. That, that's pretty awful. Which, which Heard he's, anything about that? He's incredibly quiet, so he's definitely getting sued. Good. She's out for blood. And now, he's, he's not making fun of the lady any, any, anymore. He is absolutely, like, quiet about it. So, he knows he's boned. That's funny. Which I'm so glad, because you know what? A concrete penis in his ass would do good. However, someone's crutch up his ass is even more satisfying to watch. I While endorse, also giving him Tourette's at the same time. I would endorse all of that. Because my boss is an evil human being. I genuinely do not care one bit about him. If I end up finding a job between now and the end of the year or sometime around next year, I find something. Put my two weeks in, I'm not going to give a fuck. It's not... It is not my, my problem to... There is no law in this United States which would suck. This is how you would screw the workers, is if they made it a constitutional law that if you were to quit a job, you have to find someone to replace you. Which means, if you find someone, they're going to ask you why you're leaving. So now they realize they don't want the job you have because... <coughs> See, that would be evil. However, I'm not contracted to do shit. So yeah, anything bad his way, you know what? The best thing for him is when I leave, oh, he can squirm for the next two weeks. Yep. And, you know... With, with that lawsuit, he definitely is, uh, he deserves what he gets from that. Oh, yeah. I, I want a, a, what's that, a lemony snicket? A series of unfortunate events? Yeah. I want his life to be that book for a while. I want to hang as many metallic large penises off his truck so that they drag like an anchor. I certainly want him to get sued out of his pants. Those would both be unfortunate. <clears throat> um, what if my superpower chimed in there and like... Uh, what is your superpower? My superpower is, is to give men cramps like women have during their period. I don't know if that'd be good or bad for workers, but oh, at the same time. Yeah. So you're so you give him ten seconds after my ten seconds, or ten seconds before my ten seconds, because once he feels the cramp, like oh fuck, the Tourette's are coming. <laughs> Or confuse him one day, have the Tourette's show up and say, Oh, well, that, no, that was a Tourette's! <laughs> yes. I, think, I think the second is better. I think mine after yours. <laughs> then you can say, wait, wait, blood coming out of my vagina. Wait, 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 wait. Let me actually do my Tourette's power for the first few times because he won't expect the second one to pop in. The, it's like, oh. Huh. I'm going, ah! and, and then just, just, you know, absolutely explode yeah. from his anus? Yeah, sure. Yes, let's, let's do that. And then they do a colonoscopy, and they're like, oh, well, your colon's perfectly fine. It's like, no, I was bleeding out of my ass. Yep, that sounds good to me. 
I like this I like this tag team of douchebaggery. Cause you know what? Sometimes evil people need to get fucked with. Yeah. And I'm and I'm not joking. <clears throat> My boss has a cackle to his laugh. Really? It sounds like that. You know what? Give give me an opportunity. I am going to probably put my phone on video record. Oh, we can get them all. We can get every aspect of them then. Well, <clears throat> it's too obvious if I have my phone out. If I put it in my pocket and just only use the audio <clears throat> aspect of it, if I can get him to at least laugh once, I want to at least. Have you listened to his laugh? Because it's yeah. disgusting. It is the most vile thing. And he does it at least a good 50 times a day. Wow. Oh, you're guaranteed to catch him. Yeah. So, you know what? I'm going to find an opportunity this week to see if I can capture his laugh. And I'll see if I can splice that audio into a podcast so that you all can listen to the horrible, horrible, horrible sounds that my boss makes. When he breathes sometimes, he sounds like he's masturbating a sandwich. When he what? When he breathes. Okay. He's a heavy breather? I guess. He's overweight. He's like 270, 290 pounds. So you can actually hear him breathing. Look, you can't hear us breathing right now. Yeah, sometimes he, he, he breathes loud, loud enough that he just kind of absolutely... Like, he's, like, enjoying a sandwich and masturbating it at the same time. <sighs> it's... <sighs> and he does that while he eats, too. Yeah. He is a... He's not a very quiet person. He wants to make sure that his presence is known. Well, well... Which uh, I yeah. want... Terrible Tourette's and, uh... Blood farts. And blood farts. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna call it, like, uh... Tenacious cramps. <laughs> Tenacious blood farts. Yeah, it's just... The man is vile. Yeah. Anyway, I'm totally done with my conversation of uh, superpowers. What, what the ancients <clears throat> do with the penises and the legs of women statues. The ancients are horny fucks. They are. Yes. Hams. Not brought to you by hams. Not brought to you by hams. But brought to you by hams inadvertently. So I had something happen recently. I connected again, reconnected I should say, with someone I've been friends with uh, a little bit longer than I've known you. Uh, let's see, <clears throat> Skyrim came out in 11-11-11. Uh, that's Elder Scrolls V. The Khajiits and all that. Oh, uh, the Khajiits. The reason I got into the furry fandom to begin with, even, <clears throat> was because of Skyrim. Because Khajiits. Because of Khajiits. <clears throat> so a friend of mine uh, was part of a Facebook fan page called Khajiit. Aww. And I found it and I was like, this is my new home. And I just started sharing pictures of my characters from my games. And next thing you know, I became an admin on the page and helped create content. Uh, it became like a job. I did that for a year and then I stopped doing it because it was too much work. Because a lot of people would come on there and, oh, well, you can't just post cat memes on here. And we were like, we can post whatever we want. It's our page. Yeah. If people enjoy cat memes, we will share them. I mean, Khajiits are cats. <clears throat> they are. And if you look through the history of Khajiits, there's many different types of Khajiit. One that looks very much like a house cat. Ah, yes. And doesn't speak like the modern day quote unquote. Or Khajiits. common, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I think that's a D and D thing, but I, I would say like the most 
like, which is fantastic for D&D, because when you say, oh, they speak common, which is whatever language you're the hell speaking. Right. So, with all that being said, uh, this friend that I, I basically became friends with through the Khajiit page, uh, we connected, and we never met face-to-face, -face because he's got a real, uh, I think he has an issue with, I don't know, like a social anxiety issue, uh -huh. because we've known each other now for, God, I want to say seven or eight years. If it's 2011, it'd be nine years. <clears throat> it was, Actually. It was like a year after the game came out, though. Okay. I didn't join it right away. So maybe, like, say, like a year, year and a half after the game came out. <clears throat> but we've never even spoken voice. Uh, we've never had vocal conversations. It's always been through text. But we've shared everything. And he's been through a lot. He's he's joined the army. He's he runs triathlons. Uh, we share dick pics. You share the peepees. We share peepees. <laughs> um, and then for a while there, he even said uh, we should stop because he's he's not by anymore. And wow, that. It dripped on your sweater. No, it, it went in my eye. Ah. Uh, ah, oh, it stings. He's trying to do the hams. Ah. Stop leaning back with it. You're going to make it go in your eye. Ah. My, the, 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 why would you put beer in your eye? It, it, I didn't. It went in anyway. He's trying to do eye drops with, ah. with beer. Eye shots. You know what? Alcoholics do eye drops for contacts. <laughs> oh, who's... So, so, you left off at he was by, but he's not anymore. Yeah, he, he stopped. He basically said we should stop sharing dick pics because he wasn't comfortable with it. And I was fine with it. It didn't bother me because I just enjoyed being friends with him. He, yeah. he was a good friend beyond... Seeing each other's penises. And it's rare for me to keep a friend uh, who doesn't share a dick pic. And most of the time, those people get blocked anyway, eventually, because they get weird. <laughs> uh, but he's one of the few that I kept as a friend. And so, like, we would talk, and occasionally I would update him on my life and share pictures of uh, you and I. When we were dating. When we were dating. And he seemed, you know, really happy for us, of course, as a friend would. And just recently, we were I was kind of just updating him on, you know, my move to Wisconsin and my job, which I really, honestly, I, I have to say I do enjoy it to you, a certain extent. You hate the company, but you enjoy what you do. Yes. I enjoy what I do. I hate the pay. I hate the company, but I love my coworkers and what I do. Right. It's not bad. If you can just stay focused on that aspect of it without, you know, focusing on the other shitty parts, the I can get boss. on with my day. Yeah. Yeah. And that's really what anybody should do, even because. Uh, anyway, uh, so recently I was. Sharing because I have the Spidey suit and I've showed him a picture of the Spidey suit and he's like, "Wow, you look great!" And blah 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 blah. And then today, I'm trying to think what happened. I we were talking again. We'll go like three or four months without speaking, and then we'll you know pick up where we left off, uh, as friends do. You know, you have friends that you don't always speak to every day. Right. I mean, so you have to you have to we, get caught up with. Um, we all have lives. And as much as I love all my friends that I've ever met, right. As you can tell, my life's a bit hectic, but I try to make time for whom, who, whomever I can when I can. Right. It's not that I'm ignoring you. It's just I get a bit busy. My friends get busy too. It's understandable. It, it happens. So, uh, we were speaking today, and he was commenting again on how much uh, he thought my body transformation was. And I have to say that 
I didn't really notice it till I looked in the mirror today. Because I'm down to 182 now. You're down to 182. That's uh, fantastic. Which, when I moved here, I was still around 200. Yes. Uh, and I can feel the lack of fat between the skin and the abdominal area, yep. which that's huge for me. Uh, I was looking in the mirror, and I, I really, I was like, wow, I really do look a little bit different. You certainly look a lot better, I gotta um, say. And he was noticing it too in the pictures I was sharing with, with him uh, from me in, in my Spidey suit. And he kept putting hearts in the comments, and I'm like, oh God, here we go again. But I didn't act on it at all. I'm like, he's not bi, he's straight, he's, he had a girlfriend he was pursuing. So I'm like, I, I value the friendship. I'm not going to try to hit on him or con I, convert him or anything. I think I think the hearts definitely signify that he's really happy for you. Yeah. But then he started saying how he wanted to do things to me in the suit. And I'm like, okay. Uh-oh. So he's... So in a sense, he's he's always been bi, but yes. he's more comfortable with being with women than with men because of his family. <clears throat> oh, very very Christian. Ah, uh... as we all know, the uh, a lot of the mainstream Christians, they're not down with homosexuality. They don't like the gays. In no. fact. Um... They want to. They want us away. They want them converted. Uh, to a degree, yeah. There are a good portion of them that don't do think that. It? What do they call it? Well, they're just gay concentration camps. Right, but uh, conversion the, camps. Uh, our uh, our vice president. Pence was very known for trying to get gays to convert to being straight and getting to Christianity and whatnot and. I don't even know what the results of those are. And of those people that were converted, how many of them decided, yeah, I only did this just to get the fuck out? I will say that I'm not judging anyone that's gone through this either, but that is definitely a form of... Uh, uh, oh, I just had the word and I lost it. Brainwashing? Yes, thank you. It is. That's definitely a form of brainwashing. Because those men still sound and act very gay. Yeah. I had sex with my wife the other night, and it was splendid. We had an absolute sexy time in bed. Me you know sticking what? my penis in her vagina. You know what? It's her enough. As I mentioned before, people are stubborn. The caveman that doesn't want to go around the easy part of the mountain. Yep. Uh, after, uh, after World War II, you know what? All the Germans and the uh, Japanese POWs that went to the Soviet Union as, um, well, pretty much the Western Allied Agreement at Tehran, or Yalta, that uh, that the Allies must give the Russians a certain percentage of POWs because they are the ones that suffer the most. They, they try to convert them to Marxism. Hmm. And a lot of Germans in their memoirs decided to do this as an easier means to get through. Yeah. It meant that they got more food rations. It meant that they didn't have to work so hard. Sure. They all did it. Yeah. The ones that knew, wait a minute, if I believe, if I pretend to believe in this and regurgitate everything they, they tell me just to get on through, mm -hmm. hell, some of them even got let go earlier. Yeah. You know what? I'll do it just to get the hell out of there. Right. My thoughts is that if people were sent there, they would only do what they need to just to get the hell out, yeah. just to be free again. Yep. Um, and you know what? By the time they went back to Germany or Japan, they literally threw away their old beliefs. Sure. Very, very few of them did stick. But a lot of them decided, oh, well, I only did that just to get out of the camp faster. Yeah. You know what? Same thing. People are stubborn, and if they're told to believe one thing but are told another, what seems more natural they're always going to believe in. Right. But if it means the path of least resistance means to believe something for a short while, yeah. to get back to what you're used to back home or where you're from, yes. 
then they'll do it. Yep. But that that raises a really interesting point, though. It does. That if there comes a point in this country where now this is where the world will look at the United States and tell us that we are a backwards country is if suddenly we were considered to be second-class citizens or uh, subhuman just because of who we love. Mm -hmm. You know, Canada, Mexico, much of the whole industrialized world will look at us and say, wait a minute, we're used to telling countries in Africa not to do pass the kill, kill the gays bill in uh, Uganda. This is happening in a first world industrialized nation, yep. and they're doing this. Uh, countries in Europe, which are very, very pro-gay, so is Canada, you know what? They're going to like look at us as a backwards nation. They're going to do what they can to help out. Who knows? If we go so far off our own path, which I'm surprised no one has done this, or even Canada, yeah. is to literally not impose their will on us, but to literally intervene to to literally redo undo damages done right because you know what in a free country like ours in what we think is a free country because i still like to think it's pretty much free yeah but that can be undone at any moment which yep. is scary yeah. especially with clowns in office today and especially a snow white <coughs> man who um whose best friend is a fly, and actually the fly got a better uh, reception at the debate, yeah. I'd be disappointed in this country that suddenly you are considered an outlaw because of who you love. Yeah. That's despicable. And then you know what's going to happen? So if they're going to do it against gays and lesbians, I wouldn't be surprised if they do this to Jews and Muslims. You know what? There can only be one faith. Yeah. Which... I don't want to say this out loud. Okay, I'm going to say this a bit out, out loud. I used to be religious. There's still some things I still believe in as far as be good to your fellow man. Uh, always do a good turn. Be a good Samaritan. Th these are certain things from the Bible that I really appreciate. My biggest thing will always be treat others how you want to be treated. Exactly. Otherwise, my this is a very simple belief, and again, I'm not bashing people that have strong religious backgrounds and religious beliefs, but I believe that none of the religions have it completely right. No. They don't. They're all a little bit off. And you that's know all I want to say. I, that's all I want to say about it. I don't want to say that you're dumb because you believe you know, in this religion or that religion. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that every religion has got it wrong somewhat. I just think that this country will be dumb enough to do such a thing where they're going to say we, we, we'll <laughs> only have men and women unions, which actually Christianity didn't really invent marriage. Marriage has always been yeah. a human thing for thousands upon uh, thousands Religion upon thousands. just chimed in to solidify it yeah. and to give their... Uh, nod to it. It's pretty much a social status of. It's a social status, and you know, if anything, it's more money for the church, because they, you know, they got it done in a church. You know what's my favorite? Because even now, days you can get married in, in a court. You don't have to go to a, a church. Uh, a courthouse. That's yeah. it. Literally, you don't need to go to a church to get married. No. Not a synagogue, not a mosque. I don't know what their religions, what their ways of marriage is, but if you're not religious, but you want to get married, you just you go can. to a courthouse. Yeah. That's it. Yep. And you know what? That's how most civil unions... For uh, for LGBT communities, yeah. that's the they only way we can get married is through a courthouse. Yeah, that's it. And you know what? I, w I would not want to get married at a church at this point that would make me so un uncomfortable i would imagine like even if the priest was okay with it someone in that church maybe not someone that works the church but maybe just a member of the church who catches wind of this marriage happening is not happy with it oh 
It's not just, just one. I think there'd be a like a protest outside. Right, but I'm just, uh, there. Right. There'd be no point in getting married at a church if you're gay, even if you wanted to. I still don't <clears throat> think it's a good idea. Yeah. You're kind of inviting yourself into trouble. Yeah. And even if you're religious, you're still putting yourself into danger with other people who may not know how to take it. Right. Um, which is why religion is kind of... It's it's not that I strayed away from religion. It's just, unfortunately, religion kind of strayed away from me. Me too. It's almost as if the very things I wanted to believe in the church had its own kind of agenda, and yeah. I didn't like that bit about that. My uh, my aunt uh, has always been at me, and not in a bad way. She just feels like uh, I should try and find a church that has broadened their beliefs and acceptance of the LGBTQ. There are churches like that. Uh, but... Uh, I'm just not interested. You know, it's not, I mean, Same. I feel like I'm a decent person. I've done some bad things. We all have done no bad one's things. No one's perfect. But and I a feel Christian like... that says that they have done everything to their being has a, has at least done something bad in their life. And yep. it may be bad or it may just be small. Right. But anyone that says that they've not done anything wrong in their life has a bridge to sell. Right. And I'm not saying I'm any better or any worse than anybody that does go oh. to church either. Because everybody's done something bad, like yeah. you said. But getting back to this friend, uh, because of his Christianity background, and his parents are such strong, staunch Christians that they uh, they wouldn't accept him any other way unless he was straight. And I feel like he's I, still struggling with it. I think he's living in fear. He is. He's very much living Actually, in fear. Actually, that is technically fear. He is yeah. living in fear. The fact that he, and this is his words, today, we just had this text message conversation today, mm -hmm. he still is very anxious and nervous about having a voice chat with me. Someone he's known for almost eight or nine years. How old is he? 23. So he's still living in fear. He, he must still be living with his folks. I think so. I think right that, now. That's the only thing that I thought maybe he'd be a bit more older, but yeah, yeah still... at, at that point, you might still be living with your folks. That that makes sense if he doesn't want to speak out loud. He's still at school. But that means that he don't trust his folks at all, which means you have to wonder. Their folks are probably listening into anything they could just to make sure he's on the right path. Right. And this also, same day, earlier in the conversation was talking about how he wants to suck my spidey cock. And he has a girlfriend? Had. Oh, had. They broke up like four or five months ago. Because she just wanted to have fun and he wanted a serious relationship. Uh. But now he's talking about how he wants to suck my dick. Well, those are really his inner... Feelings. Feelings. Yeah. And to be honest, you should never ever put... It's like for me, for example, growing up... I knew I was bi, but I was afraid to acknowledge it. <clears throat> yeah. Like in gym class in elementary school, there was this rope that, that we climbed, which was so dangerous because anyone could have, fa anyone could have fallen three stories yep. to their deaths or like cripple themselves on a padded mat, which would not have been enough to cushion the blow if you were to fall. Not from, but, the, not from the max uh, height. That's right. And that was a good like 40, 50 feet. And people climbed up there, and I knew that it's like, I don't trust myself climbing up that high, so I never would climb that high. Yeah. But only the brave would go to the very top and touch the shackle that was touching, that was literally bolting the rope to the ceiling beam. Right. Touching the very thing that they're holding onto, which luckily is bolted in, but that takes balls, and it's like, you know what, I prefer... Not living as a cripple in case something did go wrong. Right. But at the end of the rope, to prevent it from fraying, is a leather casing with some leather banding. Right. And I always grabbed the thing, and I thought, I'm holding a penis. And me and my 8- uh, or 10-year-old self, I'm thinking, am I touching a penis? I must be touching a penis. I don't know. This could be a penis. I don't know. But... <laughs> 
much a grade school. Anytime I looked at the end of that rope, it's like, I don't want to touch that, but it looks like a penis. Oh, wait, I'm told to touch it? Okay, I'm touching a penis. <laughs> so I was a weird kid growing up. You were, and um, it haven't changed much, I'll say oh, no, I, I, I'm still, I'm still weird. Yes. Um, and even in middle school, and, well, actually, middle school and high school, I was looking at furry porn on Yif Star and the VCL and E621. Yep. But you, you know what? Hey, if it's out there, you may as well just look at it. Hell, shit, all of my friends in middle school were already looking at porn uh, on their phones. And they had a smartphone. I didn't have a smartphone. I, I didn't really get a smartphone until after high school. Um, but, you know... What did you think of the uh, the tweet that I sent at you? About the ass? Yeah. Holy cow, is that thing, like, defined? That is a ripe apple right there. It's like, they're like two, it's like two legs connecting. There's, there's really no ass. It's literally two, <laughs> it's just literally two legs. It's literally two legs and a body. I mean, there is an ass, but. This looks like a very red apple. It looks like a peach that's gone full red and, like, shaved itself. Stick your dick um, in my peach hole. So, I can understand your friend is totally scared. Yes. But you know what? I think you know what's going to happen hmm. with your friend. Once he gets away from his family. Once he gets away from his family, I think he's going to explore more. Yeah, because he's talked about that. He said that he's he definitely wants to pursue and experiment more with his bisexu bisexuality. <clears throat> and I'm not judging. And no. I'm not forcing him to do anything that he doesn't want to do. Everything that was said and done today, he... He wanted to do. He wanted to... Uh, I asked him if he wanted to see more pictures of, of my suit. He was like, yes, please. <laughs> With a heart at the end of it. So he's definitely true to himself. He knows that. It's just he's afraid. Yeah. He's <clears throat> true to himself in heart, but in his mind he has to be straight for his folks. That's yep. pretty much it. Yep. Okay, yeah. Um, you get it. I, I totally get it. Um, Poor kid, though. I feel bad for him. You know what? I think life will get better for him when he moves out, which, yeah. you know, all of the furs that I know who are younger than me who are, are living on their own right now are the ones that either did so because they wanted independence from their folks which i can understand yeah but i'm still heart tied to getting a house in time and i don't feel because i did the calculation of how much it would cost to be renting for 30 years and how much it'd be just to pay for a house in 30 years is already convincing me that a house is still a better option. Right, for many reasons. One being the investment purpose. The only thing, the only disadvantage about own, owning a house is maintenance. That's it. Yeah. Beyond that, everything is good about a house because you know what? It's the only thing that keeps going up in value and it's better than investing in the stock market. But anyway, yeah. it's not just people who just were hell-bent to get out of their folks just, just, do their, just to do their own thing. A lot of the LGBT members, especially furries, usually moved out just to get the hell away from their folks because yes. they either burnt a bridge with them yep. or they didn't agree and it was toxic and they wanted to move out anyway. Yep. Which, yeah, is great. Although my family, we're all very close. But we're also very, very open-minded. Like, we're a very open-minded family. And when I told everyone that I was bi... I was accepted, which is, which happens, but not always. Uh, not not yeah. many people get that luxury of keeping your family. Yeah. So, and I really appreciate that even more, and they all accept me the same way. They say that I'm always going to be their butchy or their shrimpy. I got so many names growing up from my family. Uh -huh. and, and my brother's name is Skippy. Why is his name Skippy? Uh, because peanut butter. What? Yeah. Where, uh, where's peanut butter come from? Skippy. I, I know, but... Uh, the brand. The brand Skippy. I know. I know P Skippy peanut butter. How did it come about? I totally forgot. 
I think he was like playing around with it or eating it a lot, and they just said, oh. "Hey, you're like Skippy," so they call him Skippy at that point. Oh, okay, got it. I just uh, like, where is peanut butter coming from? Yeah, it's a brand. No, I know it's a brand, but like, I just didn't understand how it connected to Eric. So I think Long with, cat. yeah. So with you your friend, with your friend, I think the only way he can really become more of himself is if he were to one day move out, which he is or was a soldier, right? Yes. So he's more than qualified to apply for a house. Like uh, vets and ex-servicemen and current servicemen get really good rates yes. for loans on a house, mortgage for a house, even better than me, and I got some good credit. And after I pay off this car in three months, it's going to skyrocket. Yeah. They'll have better credit than I will, and they barely even had a credit card. And I've had mine for 11 years. So I would say he's almost better off either finding either just a simple apartment, find a buddy that he wants to either bung with or just really roommate with. Right. And yeah. kind of explore himself that way. That's, I think, the only way. And there's nothing wrong with, because I know a few, I know a few gay and bi furries that are still religious. And there's nothing wrong with that. Right. You know what would be my, which is probably my new favorite religion, and it's not really a religion. Gay, sexy Anubis. Yeah. You know what? If 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 I were to create my own religion, and actually would probably believe in just the good old mighty Anubis dick. Would just be gay, sexy Anubis. Because yeah. <laughs> you know what? Gay, sexy Anubis. Yeah. There, nothing seems bad about that because you know what? Gay, sexy Anubis. Yep. Yeah, there's just... Yeah, there we go. You know what? That's, that's, that's one god I'd want to sleep with because you know what? Okay, sexy and hubis. He loves you all anyway. How many gods can you say you want to sleep with? I mean, there's not a whole lot of them. I mean, in I, pretty much in Egyptian or in Egyptology, there are a lot of gods, but I'm gonna like pass by on the mall and say, nope, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me, coming through, Anubis, you're mine. I'm like, oh, yeah. it's like exactly for what. The sex and like, oh, okay, I'm fine with that, and then bang, and then bang, and then bang. Well, then that would be my favorite religion at this point onward, because it's kind of been recently. Because you know what, <sighs> gay, sexy Anubis. You know, it makes me want to go look up Anubis art now. Oh, it, it's everywhere. It's fantastic. Um, but it's actually cool that that you get to talk to old friends. Some of my old old friends have been as well. Since 2009, that's a good 11 years at this point, uh, poor Shusky has been a long-time friend of mine. Yeah. From the uh, AOL Messenger and Yifstar days, because yeah. I saw his art on Yifstar back in the day. Yeah. And that website became so furry, and it sucked ever oh, since, because God, it's never so been the furry. same. And that was the first website that I ever registered on was so furry. Yep, and you've got some written works on there, too. Yeah, I do. Actually, I haven't looked at that in a long time. I tried to delete the account. So, for younger or newer furries in the fandom that have been in it in the last 10 years, this is what you've missed out on on Yifstar. You've all been on E621, right? Okay, so picture E621, but much more organized in list form. You can exactly pinpoint anything you ever wanted to look for, and they have it, in the quickest way possible. You want to look for something, but you got to type it up, and it may not exist? Well, you won't know until you find out. E uh, Yifstar, they have such a broad list. It was so extensive. You just kept scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, and they went by clean art, and not safe for work art. Then they went with different species. 
uh, different subspecies or different breeds and then they got into the major list of what you want to look for and they'll find it for you yeah it was incredible and then they changed it and then the site sucked and so furry is irrelevant anymore because you know why it's irrelevant it used to be great i haven't looked at that website in years and you know what e621 is a better replacement it's not perfect but you know what it's better than what so furry is now which is it kind of I have a question. Did did uh, what's the other one? What's the other website? VCL. No, no. Uh, FA. FA. It's, it's did they ever implement the website update that they had? In nope, nope, plan? not a single update. The only time they ever updated the webs and ah, uh, wait a minute, they did a beta view or they did a beta test of, of a different skin of the website. The website itself is still somewhat the same as 2005. So did they raise a bunch of money to get that? They raised $20,000 to get three new servers that they never got. So he, what did he do with that money? Probably for paying off personal debt or used for personal money. <sighs> Dragoneer is not a good person to really do any business with. No, no, he um, is not. And you know what? Five furries paid $20,000. Uh. And their money went nowhere. That's how, oh, ev ev God. ever since, if you if you understand why I stopped using FA after November of 2015, go look up in the archives, November 2015, a GoFundMe page of Dragoneer with a bleeding heart saying, hey, the website can't go on no longer. We need three new servers, but we don't have the money to do so. FA may only last a few more months and then it's gone forever. Please help us in our drive to update the website and even give the website its promised new look we've been trying to get for years. Which we still don't have. Which you still don't have. The look you have is the revamped 2010 version. Yep. Which is just a facelift of the 2005 version. It's which a is a reskin. It's not a yeah. redesign of the no. website. It's the same fucking website. It's the same fucking website. And people don't realize that. And still, by the way, mind you, not mobile friendly. Nope. Oh, no. Anytime I ever try to look at that website on my phone, it's it's a fucking mess. Yeah. I, I, I'm not so much a fan of it either. I don't no. know what to think of it. It's it's a piece of crap is what it is. It's, which is why I think, really, they say, well, Twitter's not really a good platform to, to, to display art. Well, you know what? Neither is FA because, you know what? It's not that great at all. You know what's a better platform? E621, because you know what you can do? There's nothing on E621 that you can, like, post clean art. Yeah, it's 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 a website for NSFW, but nothing's stopping you from putting clean art on it anyway, right? Yeah. So, you know what's a better form of displaying your art and every artist... Every major artist does this. E621. Yeah. <clears throat> FA is a really terrible way to socialize, but it's also not a really good way to really get yourself out there. It's not a social media website. No. Most of all my recent art commissions have been on Twitter or on Telegram. Yeah, all, all of mine have been over Twitter. The only reason why that artists have not let go of FA is solely because they feel they might still need it. They feel there are other means to get customers. And you know what? Twitter might be the best way possible. Well, that's, you... the, that's the only thing. It's the, uh, for more better established people on there that have, you know, 70, 80,000 followers, it's... It's like, it feels like a security blanket for them. Like, I've always got these this huge fan base here. And I don't want to have to start over somewhere else. But when a website like that doesn't update ever, and people stop using it, it doesn't matter then. You know what? I've You're noticed... You're going to have to put yourself out somewhere else. I've noticed that after November 2015 on FA... There has never been that many people that's been on that site since. Because a lot of people got disappointed that they never got the update they wanted, nor the updates that the website needed, like the servers. You know what? And who's the 
Who's the banner advertiser on there that bought part of the website? Oh, that would be INVU, and they've done squat with that. They've actually been charged, not charged, but they have been found kind of guilty, but totally guilty on copying people's um, personas as part of their... Um, because IMVU is some kind of game, yeah, online game of characters, and they inspired a lot of characters from some of the personas, some of the popular personas on FA. So they were actually literally taking your character without even paying you royalties. They were just stealing people's yeah. uh, personal property. Yeah. So that's terrible. Dragoneer sold out FA. Dragoneer took a lot of money from people that. Probably should have kept it in her pocket anyway. F.A. was going to get sold to IMVU regardless. And F.A. is not relevant anymore. It's not the biggest used website anymore. You know what's the biggest used, not even free website? Do you know what's the biggest form of social media that is being used by furries? And often enough, there's a joke online that it is only used by furries. Mm. Telegram. Very few normies use Telegram. Oh, oh, furries have technically taken over Telegram at this point. Um, yeah, there are normies on there, but... <laughs> Telegram is just furry. Yeah. I think we've gone everywhere. Yes, we have. I think I'm going to pass out soon. Alright. Well, I think we've talked quite a bit. I actually a lot of stuff, so. So, this has been another episode of the Zooming Who's podcast. And your sexy gay god, Anubis. This is Dustin DeHusky. And I'm Kurt Ansarpus. Thank you for tuning in again. Bye, guys. See ya.